Hello guys and welcome back to the MR2 build. So in this video we're going to be looking at the rear reverse lamp and the rear fog lamp, the coil pack and the igniter, the, well in this video the rear registration number plate and the throttle cable. So I've already got the throttle cable off, they're both here, this is the replacement, this is what I've taken off. I've measured them, they're identical, the exact same length, I did check before I purchased it that it was the right one for the car. Now the reason I've took this off is, well, if you can see there, completely frayed we're missing quite a few strands as well so there's three or four there but i'm sure further down there's probably more because it looks like there's about half missing also the acceleration in this car is it's it's a wee it's a strange feeling the pedal goes halfway before it even engages and i've tried adjusting it but it's at its max so the throttle cable has been installed and i didn't record it, it was really difficult to get the camera in there i did try but there's there's only a few inches of room between me and the car and getting this in was a pain to start with so unfortunately it's in i didn't show it but this is the cable that i've taken out now basically how it works is your accelerator pedal would sit here this cable will feed through at the side then this clips in and once this is clipped in there's no way the cable can come back out that's quite simple to remove you basically just pinch these two clips here and that'll pop out this should be simple to remove it's held in by two bolts you unscrew the bolts and then you can quite simply pull the entire cable through through the firewall so i say this should be simple to remove the reason why it wasn't for me is because the board broke now when this is in the car it is like this this bolt on the left goes through the firewall into the front trunk area the front this side goes to the wheel arch this is the one that snapped off so what i do is use my drill set, drill out the bolt and attach a new bolt. Now it sounds simple enough but getting into that wheel arch was difficult because the suspension's in place and inside the car I had to remove the bottom end of the dash and the accelerator pedal and all sorts of other bits and bobs just to get the drill in at an angle to drill that out but we got it done, there's a new bolt in there now and this will be going in the bin. So a bit of advice on removing this basically you unhook this from the engine bay and then you just follow the cable under the car it goes down by the intercooler there's two clips around the intercooler then underneath there's a couple of clips a couple of plastic ones i think there's a metal one you got to open up and basically just release all the clips there's no bolts once you've done that go back to the car this will be like this like i say remove the two bolts and then quite simply just pull this out from inside the car and the cable will come all the way out. You might need to go to the front of the car and just keep feeding it through because it may get caught on these sections here where there's a bit of a lip and that is it out. To get it back in, just feed this from the inside through the firewall, round the brake booster, down the bottom of the trunk at the front and then pull it through under the car, up the back of the engine bay, round the intercooler and attach it back to the engine. So the problems with this, as I mentioned before, when you apply the accelerator, you when you push the pedal, you get halfway down before you even feel any kind of resistance on the cable. So it was it was a bit strange. I've not really driven this car yet, I've just kind of moved it around. And even that was it was bizarre. You were kind of giving it, you know, half of the juice and nothing was happening. So the reason why is because the cable itself is just completely perished. It's snapped. It's just all sticking up. So it is definitely shot and I'm guessing it's stretched because these have unwound because the new one I've put on I measured these side by side and they're identical they all perfectly lined up where these bolts are and where it's joined here everything just aligned perfectly so it is an identical like for like but obviously the cable inside is stretched we have this here so I don't know what's inside here there could possibly be some rusted throttle cable and maybe it's extended here also and I believe there was a second one and we have this part here as well so it's rusty inside which is never good so yeah that needs to be replaced that's been done this is now junk so the next thing we're going to do is replace the coil pack and the igniter now this one is from the car and this one is my replacement part notice the part numbers are different so my car is a rev one with a rev two i believe it's a rev two turbo engine this is from a rev1 na engine and this is from a rev2 turbo engine 
Now this is the one that's for this wiring harness on this car. That's why I think it's a Rev 2 because this is from a Rev 2 and the Rev 2 has this notch at the top. Also, if you look at the keys on the side, when it goes halfway up and it's thin, and on that side, it's halfway up and it's thin. Now, on the one that came with my car, as you can see, there's no notch and it's half up and it's thin on that side but on this side it's chunky now because that's thicker than the other side the plug itself doesn't actually fit on when you put it on it only goes halfway across at an angle and i applied some gray force to get it kind of seated to the point where it would work i'm getting an engine light on the dash and i'm hoping this is a problem now when i've did the diagnostics i got a error code of 14 which apparently is this guy here so i'm hoping it has something to do with the igniter now i'm assuming i mean this is an NA igniter i would imagine that the turbo needs a turbo igniter because i imagine that they run differently so also the fact these are keyed now if this was universal, if I could use it any igniter on a turbo engine, surely they wouldn't put a key at the top. What is the purpose of not allowing you to unplug this and plug this one in, or unplug this and replace it with this one? If they were identical, firstly they wouldn't have different part numbers, secondly they wouldn't be keyed. So my logic is that the reason why I'm getting the engine cord is because the igniter, or possibly the coil, is at fault. So I went out and this was taken from a perfectly working car. This is from a Revision 2 a turbo car. So let's go and install this and hopefully this will fix the issue. That's installed. I'm not going to start the engine because it is really early on a Sunday morning and the last thing people want in my neighbourhood is this engine started up <laughs> this time on a Sunday morning. So I'll try the engine later on. So change of plans. So I was going to install the fog light and reverse lamp. However, I'm sick to death of this engine bay. So the lid basically was never attached when I got the car and I'm sick of propping it up. The clip that holds the actual rod, that's missing. So I'm having a cable tie all the time and it's just doing me, it's, it's just irritating. So, I did pick up some replacing clips. I needed one, but unfortunately I couldn't just get one, so I had to buy a full pack of them. So I'll get that put in the actual engine lid itself. And I've picked up some replacement hinges. So let's go get these hinges installed and hopefully have a work in the engine lid. That is the coil pack the igniter and the engine lid back in i've did the right side engine cover i didn't put the left side on because i totally forgot i've not actually installed the new air filter that we rebuilt so this was done in a previous video it was fully sandblasted painted new filter so we'll get that put in next and also fuel filter it's quite nice it comes with some new brass washers so that's that'll save me using some of my own and the fuel filter looks pretty decent it's not oem but it'll do the job Remove these caps, screw it in place, put it in position, and simple as that really. Once this is out and replaced, and this is installed, I think I'll pull the plugs. And I'll bring them in, get them all clean, put them back in. Since we've replaced the igniter and the coil, it just makes sense to make sure the plugs aren't fouled, because if the igniter was faulty, the coil was faulty, the plugs are probably going to be fouled. So we'll get them out as well.
sounded like air. Do we fuel priming the fuel filter? Yeah. So no fuel come out, no? Okay. No puddles? I think no. I'd have expected a fountain, but no. Battery. No battery. Try number two. Maybe it's on the battery. So we've got the fuel filter off, uh, I may cut this open, have a look inside, it might be interesting to see what's actually going on inside, see if it's actually blocked up, but I think it's probably going to be okay. Now there is normally a date on these, and you can see it's a 15th of 07, but unfortunately the actual year is missing. Really can't work that out. Maybe 2009? No, it's 2000 something, it's really difficult to see, so unfortunately we can't get a year on this, but that is off. I picked up some of these, um, if you watch the previous video, you will see the lug nuts are completely shot, I had to drill a few out, so I've picked up these, these should do the job, so I'm going to put the wheels back on the car. So guys, I've got to apologise, it has been 6-7 weeks since I've done any work on the MR2, We've had some major issues. Uh, the wife's car and my car, our daily drivers, have both failed on us. Uh, we've, we've had one thing after another with them cars, mainly the Mini Cooper, to be fair. The videos are on YouTube, if you want to check them out, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but yeah, good news is the cars are back on the road, working perfectly fine. The Vogue actually passes MOT the other day, so we can put them cars in the past and look forward to the future, which is the MR2. So the MR2, as I showed you in this video, we have the number plate, we have the rear reverse lamp, the rear fog lamp, all that good stuff left to go. We have some new indicators for the front and we've got more stuff on the way. So the parts are here and the videos will be coming shortly, I do promise. In case you're curious what that noise is in the background, it is this guy here. I am actually currently making some water for my fish tank. It's a 10 foot fish tank, a water change will be happening at night, so get that out of the way. We can get back on to the MR2. Hopefully, no more delays, this car will be on the road. By the end of the year, I would like to say in the next four to six weeks, it could possibly be in the road, driving it around, just in time before the snow and the, the ice and all that goodness comes. The videos will keep coming, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Like always, please comment, subscribe, like down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.